Well, hello there. The purpose of this tape is to show you how to do a titration. It's not necessarily to tell you a lot about the lab that you're going to do in this particular case, but it does show you how to do a titration no matter what lab you're doing. Now, the equipment that you should have is some sort of reaction beaker or flask. You should have a burette set up on this burette stand with a burette clamp, and that the burette's this long glass thing. And you should have a sample or a supply of your solution that you're going to be titrating. A pipette, in this case, which will enable you to accurately measure out your solution you're titrating. A pipette bulb. In this case, you want some phenolphthalein because that's your indicator. And also, it would probably be wise to have a small supply of the, uh, in this case, the base solution that is in the burette, base in the burette, BB. Okay? Now, um, how to do this is, uh, in this case, we're doing with the milk. So, you want to use the pipette to measure out 10.00 milliliters of milk. These pipettes are calibrated, as you can see here, uh, to milliliters, and actually they're calibrated to the hundredths of a milliliter. Now, what you need to do in order to get any solution in this pipette is use a pipette bulb. That's one of these things. Now, there are red ones and there are black ones, but they essentially work the same. The red ones can work just by squeezing the bulb to begin with. There's a one-way valve here, and that creates a little vacuum. Now, in that vacuum, then, uh, will enable you to squeeze. If you squeeze this arrow here, okay, it will draw up solution up into the pipette. And then this arrow right here, if you squeeze that, it will let the solution drain out of the pipette. Okay, so just to show you how this works, I'll put it on the pipette here, put it in our milk supply, squeeze the bulb. I'm squeezing the arrow below the bulb. You can see a little milk getting drawn up into there. I'm not going to draw it up all the way because the other thing that you should do when using the pipette is you should rinse, rinse the inside of your pipette with whatever solution that you're trying to measure with that pipette, in this case the milk. Why? Because the pipette may have been used by somebody before you and they hopefully cleaned it out and there's just water in there. You don't want that water mixed with your solution because it changes the concentration of things, as you already know. Uh, also, it may be contaminated. Maybe they didn't rinse it and you want to get rid of whatever solution they left in there. So you just want to rock this back and forth, a little bit of milk, rock it back and forth, coat the entire inside of the pipette with that milk, and then drain that solution into the sink, which I'm doing right now, okay? Um, now you want to do that two more times. You should do it a minimum of three times so that the inside of this burette, uh, pipette is completely coated and all the contaminants are out of there and it just has a solution you're trying to pipette. I know that this uh, uh, pipette was clean uh, to begin with, so I'm not going to do it for time's sake. I'll just go ahead and start with my transfer of my 10.00 milliliters of milk. I'm drawing it up, as you can see there, drawing it up to near the zero mark, maybe a little past. Don't draw it too far past because if you get any of the milk or any other solution into these bulbs, they mess them up and then they don't work. Okay. Now, I'm going to squeeze this other arrow right here on the side arm and get this uh, milk down to the zero mark, right about there. Okay, now, as I said, these are calibrated to milliliters. And you can see there's a zero on top here, and down at the bottom is a 10. Okay, the tip is not calibrated. So if you want 10.00 milliliters, you would go from the zero to the 10, not empty out the pipette. Okay, so I've got my, t uh, I'm going to drain this in there. Da, da, da. All the way down to the 10 mark. Okay, there's my 10.00 milliliters. I can do that pretty quickly because I'm pretty experienced, but you may want to work a little slower there, at least the first time you're using it. Now I have my milk in my reaction beaker or flask. And I'm pretty much ready to go, except for the phenolphthalein. Now, this is an indicator that's going to tell you when you've reached the end point. You add one, maybe two drops of the phenolphthalein. And the phenolphthalein is colorless when the solution is neutral or acidic. So the milk still just looks like normal milk. 
When there's excess base around, that phenolphthalein turns a very bright pink, and you'll be able to see that in a second. All right, so this is ready to go. This burette has the base in it, 0 0.100 molar NaOH in this lab. And so you uh, have the base in there, it's all set to go. On your lab, you can see that you're going, you have to read the initial volume. All right, and uh, so I'll read the initial volume here. And that is 18.42, 18.42, write that down, all right. When you're reading the burette, it's scaled from the top down. And it's scaled to, uh, that you can read them to the hundredths of a milliliter. So you might want to have me check your, one of your first readings so that you can make sure that you're reading this properly. But check it out, take your time the first time or so until you get used to using this burette scale that's on this burette. Okay, now, um, in general, in this lab, what we're trying to do is find out the concentration of calcium ions. Well, we know what volume of calcium, uh, what volume of solution we have in here. It's 10.00 milliliters. But we have no idea how many grams of calcium ions or how many moles of calcium ions. That's what the titration is going to tell you. You know, you're going to know how much base you're going to add, okay, and that will be a volume. You'll know the concentration of base, 0 0.100 molar. So based on molarity and volume, you'll be able to calculate moles of base that you added. And you're only going to add as many moles of base as you need to get the stoichiometric amount. That stoichiometry, if you recall from first semester, is from the balanced equation. You write a balanced equation on your lab. I believe it's question two. It asks you to write a balanced equation for the reaction between calcium ions and sodium hydroxide. And that balanced equation will give you that ratio, that stoichiometry between calcium ions and NaOH. So if you know how many moles of NaOH, which this titration will tell you, you'll be able to convert that to moles of calcium ions. Well, moles of calcium ions, a volume of solution, you'll be able to do the concentration of calcium ions. Okay? So uh, I've set this up. I've read my base volume. I'm ready to go. So what you do is you just turn this stopcock here, and you might want to turn it on and then off right away because it comes out kind of fast. And you just do that, and you want to swirl this a little bit because you'll see a little bit of that pink color even from the first edition. But as you swirl this, the base will react with the calcium ions, and then there won't be excess base around, and the pink color will go away. So you add a little more base. And you swirl, pink color goes away, add a little bit more base, swirl. Now when you see that pink color sticking around a little longer than what it used to at the beginning, that means you're getting really close to the end point. And so you want to add less base with each trial, maybe even start getting down to drops of base. Okay? Now how do you do drops? You have to have a steady hand and just turn it, And because if you turn it on and try to turn it off and get a drop, it's not going to happen. But if you turn it on slowly so this stuff is just slowly coming out, and then you can, um, and then you can just let one drop fall. Okay? You could also add less than a drop. I, I don't know if you can see it, but I just turned it on just barely, so a little bit drained out, and there's a, like a half a drop hanging on the tip here. And you just take a bottle of distilled water and wash the water, just take, the, like put the tip here, and the water will drain down the tip and it will wash that half a drop of base into the beaker and then you've added a half a drop. That will make your uh, data hopefully even more accurate as you get close to the end point. Another way to add less than a drop is if you have a fast hand and the stopcock isn't too sticky, you can actually do a quick flip. And I'll try to do it here and show you what I do. I just, I'm just going to do a quick flip on the stopcock like that. I don't know if you saw it, but that actually adds less than a drop of base. Okay, now I'm not, I'm getting close to the end point here, and I'll try to get it so that we just get a little faint pink color. Okay, well, still going away. Try to do this fast here. Okay, now, what I have here, if I'll swirl a little bit more just to make sure it's sticking around. Okay, and I'm going to hold this up to the camera, and you'll see that there's a very faint pink color staying in that milk.
Okay, here I'll even hold up the original milk so you can compare. All right, you can see there's a very, very faint color of pink remaining in the milk. Now that very, very faint color of pink, if it remains after a minute of swirling your flask or your beaker, that means you've reached the end point. You've added a stoichiometric amount of base to the calcium in this case, and it's, there's just a little bit of extra base around with that faint pink around. And, and so you're done, and you would take your final reading here, which in this case is 20.73, 20 20.73. So now I know a volume of base, and as I described before, you'll be able to do moles and moles of calcium and find out the concentration of calcium. Well, let me go show you what it looks like if you go.